Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Zara O'Brien. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Simon Evans and Mickey Flanagan, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Greg Davis. We start with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of the Lib Dem top brass recently. Mm. But what does CRCT stand for? Is it uh, Cable Reaches Centenary Today? <laughs> <laughs> cable remembers Crimea and Trafalgar. <laughs> He's got his finger pointed at Craig. Is it Cable Reveals Collaborator Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> is it uh, Clegg Regrets Couples Therapy? <laughs> Is it what happened next? Is it Cable reaches and caresses tenderly? <laughs> Is it Cable resembles crinkly testicle? <laughs> could, could it be... Can't remember choosing them? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Is it Cable realises Clegg's a Tory? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think Tusser would have got a bigger... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a cracker that way. Yeah. <laughs> you make it political, I'll make it funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does anyone have the correct answer? Is it conference reveals coalition tensions? That's exactly what it is. Ah. Thank you very much, Andy. Oh. Yes, the answer I was looking for was conference reveals coalition tensions. This is the news that the Liberal Democrat Party conference has exposed growing tensions within the coalition. The latest claim comes as the party's president, Tim Farron, says the Lib Dems have become tainted by their association with the Conservatives, comparing the coalition to a marriage that is heading for divorce. Hmm. Now, who's come out fighting this week, then, for the Lib Dems? They all have, haven't they? Yeah. Did you see what the slogan was for the Lib Dem conference? <clears throat> In government, on your side. And I was thinking, surely a better slogan would be in government, still can't bloody believe it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is, is a because it? it was a, it's a very fighting talk kind of conference, and yeah. it was like it was like oh we're we're not the we're not the oh we're showing them every day. One of the things he mm. said was we are blocking Tory laws every day, <laughs> like they're ninjas, and these things are being flung out. The <laughs> <laughs> This is going to be the biggest divorce since Paul McCartney dumped Heather Mills. Although, unlike the Tories, Heather Mills does lean slightly to the left. <laughs> The tragedy of it is, though, it's on, the, it's on the telly, isn't it? And these are a party in power, they're sharing yep. government, and the conferences are, and when you turn on the conference, you don't think, oh, look, I really must listen to all these arguments. You think, what have they done with diagnosis murder? <laughs> <laughs> it's the language that the press choose to report it in that's amazing. The Daily, Mail, the Daily Mail always choose words to make the Liberals look even more ridiculous than they actually are. They said that the Liberals were threatening to flounce out yeah. of government. <laughs> <laughs> they were go, Come on, Vince, get your red box, we're leaving. <laughs> Talk to the hand, cos the legislative agenda ain't listening. <laughs> And he said he was, we're punching above our weight. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 where I come no. from, that's a really bad thing. Well, you're punching above your weight a bit, aren't you? Yeah. In, in my town, you're punching above your weight if your wife hasn't got a beard. <laughs> <laughs> what proposal has Energy Secretary Chris Hewn announced this week? Uh, he's going to try and force energy companies to reduce prices, isn't he? Something about... Yeah, he is, yeah, because he thinks that people aren't getting the competition they deserve. I yeah. think the problem there is that people don't understand energy supplier. The phrase, do they? Particularly teenagers and stuff. You say, you know, have you switched your energy supply? They'll probably go, well, like I was on Lucas Aid, now I'm on Relentless. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. That, that is the voice of young Britain, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, in fact, on Economy 7. Oh. And that's supposed to save you money, cos you, the idea is you do <laughs> things overnight. But I'm not sure it does actually save you money, cos you tend to put the washing machine to go on overnight, then you actually forget that you've put it on. Two days later, you go back to the washing machine, <laughs> smell the clothes, <laughs> think, i better put those on again. <laughs> Saving, saving you money so long as you're using it in 1986. <laughs> 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 I, I would say to you, Andy, that cook, cook, cookability is. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to save energy, Andy, you want to fit the best fit ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's called economy 
Seven. Seven. Andy, 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 I've got something to say to you. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. That's so blue. <laughs> Leave him. Don't take the piss out of him. He's got a tiger in his tank. <laughs> The funny thing is, I, am, I don't get any of these jokes because I, I, gr I grew up in Ireland. I don't get any of these jokes. How about Fiddly D, have coal? <laughs> that, that wasn't a popular ad in Ireland, thank you very much. It would make things a lot easier if there was an actual difference when you switch supplier. If they went, I've gone from EDF to British Gas and now. I don't know, it looks a bit French or something. Do you know what I mean? If it, if it just had something about it, but what, it wasn't the gas. patently yeah. exactly the same gas the, and just a different bill. But then would the gas should come out in a different colour? Yes, I don't know. No old shape or something. <laughs> 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 oh, I like this. This is new. Ooh. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Every so often, a, yeah. like a, a Sonnet Lumiere show would go on. I think. <laughs> My father is convinced that since uh, they switched to a French owned ga uh, electricity company, that the electricity is coming through slower. He is sure of it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And did he think that it's coming? It's kind of coming with a kind of a French. <laughs> ah, I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> Why are you so desperate to have a cup of tea over there? <laughs> I'm still distressed okay. to find out that my economy seven only existed back in the 1980s. <laughs> <laughs> in in it. other news, yes. What's going on here? Oh, oh, that's is great. it? Here is Louis with the over 25s. <laughs> yeah. Is it the? Uh, the eight stickers I need to complete my panini am <laughs> <laughs> Got it, got it, yeah. got it, got it. Got it, guys. Are they, it, yeah. are they the victims of a ninth man who's been gluing people to rulers? <laughs> this is a campaign against selling Stella Artois. <laughs> is it? These, are the, these are the women you end up sleeping with. <laughs> Oh, in fact, these are the replies that convinced me to cancel my subscription on Match.com. <laughs> <laughs> the bloke in the top right definitely used to have his head slapped by Benny Hill. That's all right. <laughs> OK, I oh, know. No, I think no, I know, no, it's, no, no. I know it's a poster for the new movie, The Unusual Suspects. <laughs> They are all Amish, um, by those who are very respected from Kentucky. They've been jailed for non-payment of fines after they refused to put reflective safety signs on their horse-drawn buggies because it was too modern. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't one of the better uh, university challenge episodes. <laughs> and, and the Amish University A versus Amish University B. <laughs> I, I, I do think... Sorry, I love the idea of that being a university challenge. And the scores remain zero because neither Amish team wishes to use the buzzer. <laughs> He looks so much guiltier, that bloke in the top right, than all the others, doesn't he? <laughs> it's like Father Christmas has been hanging out with the wrong people. <laughs> you want to have a look at one more, do you just say, but yeah, let's have a close of one more. Ha 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 up your sleeve, Isn't how I would look as a like harmish. <laughs> Ken Clark. It is Ken Clark. <laughs> yeah. it's a, are you sure it's not an advert uh, for regain uh, hair folks? <laughs> it would be a warning ad. I, I smeared it here and it came out here. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of the round, the points go to Chris, Hugh and Gray. <laughs> now we play a round called Tinker Taylor Soldier Stand Up. <laughs> this game involves Simon, Greg and Mickey, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch a wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is fatherhood. Who wants to come in on that? Greg. <laughs> yeah, my uh, father has taken um, fatherhood in a very strange direction in the last few years. Um, and it started about three years ago at Christmas when he announced to me, and this is a quote, and all of what I'm about to tell you is entirely real. This happened. He said to me, Son, I am 72. I said, I'm aware of that. He said, Yes. I've decided from now on I should start behaving exactly as I see fit. And I said, Well, I would welcome that. He said, I'm glad you agree, because when you come home for Christmas, you'll discover this year that I am wearing a Christmas outfit. <laughs> 
then, I got home and, true to his word, he was wearing a Christmas outfit. I swear to you, it was one giant pair of white underpants <laughs> that stretched from his knees to just below his nipples <laughs> and a novelty Santa hat with a flashing bulb on the end. <laughs> and he came downstairs, and this is a quote, do you like? <laughs> I said, I find it a bit challenging. He said, I don't give a shit what you think. And he went off to eat some cheese. <laughs> this is where it gets weird. <laughs> I went out that night with some of the people in my hometown. Midnight, anticipating me coming home, my mother tells me he did this. He went upstairs in his panther outfit. <laughs> he went to my mother's sheet drawer, for she has one. He took out a double white sheet, he placed that over his head, he went out into their garden and he hid in a bush. <laughs> with a view to giving me, his then 40-year-old son, a bit of a scare. <laughs> Presumably, my mother is so sick of his shit, she decided not to tell him something that she full well knew, that on that occasion, I'd stayed over at a friend's house. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The next subject is class. Who wants to come in that? Simon. Uh, class, yes. This is a society... Our country is a society riven by class. I, I was very much aware of this when I lived in, in Brixton uh, for many years. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> no, seriously, the, the streets of Brixton are littered with homeless people, vagrants, derelicts of one kind or another. It's very distressing if you're trying to pursue a, a, a middle-class path. And, um, <laughs> and you become... And, and I, you know, and I, I, I could blinker myself to them when I, was, when I was a young man, but when I had children, it became more difficult. Certainly, we had a three-wheeler, we could get over most of them, but it slowed you down. <laughs> and it would puzzle me why they were there, to be honest, because, I mean, I, you know, homelessness is very sad, but why, if you're homeless, would you choose to stay in Brixton? The one advantage of being homeless is you can choose where you live. <laughs> Walk. You could be in the countryside. A couple of vouchers out of the Daily Mail. You could be in the south of France by the weekend. <laughs> Pick up some cheap booze on the ferry. They like a drink, don't they? The homeless, as a rule. <laughs> I don't want to tar them all with the same brush. Although, if you sleep on the road, that will happen soon or later. <laughs> I do think... I do think it's a bit ironic the favourite drink of the homeless should be a beer called Tenants. <laughs> OK, that leaves us with Mickey. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And subject is fashion. <laughs> now, I'll tell you about fashion. <laughs> um, now... <laughs> a few years ago, I was looking for... Um, I was looking for a new image. So I started going on stage like this, thinking that'll create an image for me. They'll go, you've seen the geezer, stunning looking. Where's his top button down? <laughs> but I subsequently found out the image this tends to create is, you're a wanker. <laughs> so I looked into the whole issue of it, and I'll tell you the situation with the shirt button, OK? So, because the people don't really thought of like that, they tend to undo their top button. There we go. It's better, isn't it? Yeah. However, it's not enough. It's still a bit too high. Still a bit of tension in the room. <laughs> what you really want is one more. Watch. <laughs> See that? It's palpable, isn't it? Everyone's going, whoa, thank God for that. <laughs> that is the level of buttonage we require from a man going out for the evening to the all bar one. Very good. <laughs> However, <laughs> if I go one more, <laughs> I'm suddenly back to being an arsehole again. <laughs> Is it being a man knowing that you're going through life only ever one button away <laughs> from being a wanker <laughs> or an arsehole? <laughs> there you go. Well done, all of you. The polls there. And go to Simon and Mickey. Come on, let's sit down. <laughs> Our next round is called. If this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories? Simon, which category would you like? Uh, world News. Please. Okay, your category is World News. And the answer is 328 billion. What is the question? 
Is it, is it measured in pounds? How fat is your mama? <laughs> How many items do you get free if you buy one at Lidl? <laughs> How many trailers have there been for Downton Abbey? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, um, according to the Daily Mail, how many travellers are there at Dale Farm? <laughs> uh, Is it how many press-ups would I have to do to fit into one of Chris Addison's shirts? <laughs> You'd have to do more than that, big fella. <laughs> Is it how many troops does President Gaddafi claim are still loyal to him? <laughs> number of pieces you get in a box when you buy a wardrobe from Ikea? <laughs> <laughs> is it, um, is it uh, how many points does Silvio Berlusconi have on his brothel nectar card? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, uh, is it, in fact, how many missed calls from Zara were on Mike Tyndall's answer phone? <laughs> Is it, uh, what is the total debt now in euros that Greece owes the rest of us? That's absolutely right. Thank you very much, Chris Allison. Right. <laughs> yes, the question I was looking for is, what is the total debt faced by Greece? This is the news that Greece, whose debt is a staggering 320 billion euros, is teetering on the brink of bankruptcy. Eurozone finance ministers are in disagreement about how to bail out the Greek economy. So what progress is it making? Well, they've given the telly back to Bright House. <laughs> it's, it's bad news, though, isn't it? They owe 250 grand each. Yeah, apparently, yeah. But, I mean, it is, it is bad mm. news. I mean, imagine how bad Donny kebabs are going to taste when they start putting really cheap meat in them. <laughs> Do you know what it is? Given the products they're most famous for, they're, they're particularly worried about a double-dip recession. <laughs> I feel really sorry for in all this mess. The guy who's been charged with the job of putting all the plates back together. <laughs> because <laughs> they can't afford to keep breaking them, so <laughs> he's being asked to glue them back together so, again. It's all rubber plates now. And hey! I'm not an economist, but they. No, no. Nah. They should. As far as I can see, they shouldn't have got rid of the drag mark, should they? They've kept their own yogurt, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they weren't meant to have that level of debt to join the European Union in the first place, yeah. were they? There was meant to be a much lower level of debt, where they, they hid all their deficits from the rest of Europe in a giant wooden horse. <laughs> <laughs> What's making it worse is they're continuing to spend. That's the problem. European finance ministers are saying they, they've got to do some belt tightening. They can't do belt tightening. They wear togas. They look, it, they look like they're in Howard's way. <laughs> 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 they, not only are they spending, they're also not paying any tax. Any tax at all. Corinth, um, the authorities have collected... The amount of euros collected in the entire city in the last six months is £18,000. Nothing. Apparently, according to people claiming it, there are apparently, there are 12 million people, only 5,000 of them make more than 90 grand a year. They are claiming. It's like nobody is admitting anything. The whole country just gone, we're not paying tax. We're just not paying anything. And like, that's why the Germans are going, now, we'll, we'll give you the money, yeah. but are you going to pay the tax? And they're going, yeah, yeah, no problem, yeah, <laughs> give us the money, OK, we've got the money. Oh, da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> oh, we're just, we're just on the way to pay our tax now. Uh, my cousin cost us. He's got the envelope. He's going. Okay, bye. <laughs> 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 uh, so, uh, it's not strictly relevant, but I went out with a Greek girl once. <laughs> no, Did you I, I can't it? imagine how this wouldn't be relevant to a discussion of their economy. Uh, Did you not have I much think, money, Greek? Yeah. I'm just throwing it in. Yeah. I was in a lift once in Greece, and this Greek man turned to me and he went, "Are you sometimes gay?" But <laughs> well, he's giving you a way out there. Because it, it went really quiet and he went, Are you sometimes gay? You don't get trouble went, around front. No, though, never, no, never really. No, never. <laughs> went, okay. Yeah. <laughs> OK, in other news, who has been granted a last-minute injunction? The travellers. Yes. Yes. At Dale Farm. At Dale Farm. There is a sort of irony, isn't there, in the fact that the travellers don't want to go anywhere. It's sort of... <laughs> I don't... But it's just a term, though. It's just a term, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, cos, let's face it, bouncers don't actually bounce, <laughs> do they? <laughs> 
<laughs> if they did, yeah. when I jokingly pushed one over recently, I wouldn't have spent the night in hospital. And you can understand my disappointment when I went to that swingers party. Uh, <laughs> <and> <laughs> I saw one of the women interviewed from the site, and she said, putting a traveller in a house is like putting a traveller in a prison. But yet they're building them. <laughs> you put a traveller in a lodge. <laughs> Yeah. What is that character? It's Jeanette. Sounds like one of the Terror Hawks. They're always claiming it's You've mysterious. You've gone so many different countries with an accent as well. <laughs> Welsh, French... What do you think? <laughs> to be fair, did tell anybody, I get you, Smurfs! Uh... <laughs> when I first heard about the story, I thought, I really hate travellers. Uh, and then I realised it's these, the Irish travellers, it's not those twats who go around this, the world for a year after university. And I can't, <laughs> I can't down. I'd love to see the bailiffs going after them. No! You'll never take my dream catcher away from me! <laughs> it's not a dream catcher, it's string. <laughs> It's a shockingly disappointed gap here, though, if you end up in Basildon. Basildon, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Depends where you start, right? The, uh, the people of Basildon are so upset, they're just sick and tired of these posh people moving into the area. <laughs> 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 Who else come out and support them? Everybody, loads yeah. of people. When I first turned the, the news on, there were uh, two bishops and an actress turning up to a caravan site. I was hoping for some low-budget 70s porn. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't turn up. And think... then Gloria Honeyford. Um, who it turns out wasn't there in support of them. <clears throat> she was there for her new show, Wish They Weren't Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The arrival of the um, <clears throat> bailiffs was one of the biggest anti-climaxes I've ever, ever seen. There was about 30 of them, and they had one 1970s loud hailer between them. <laughs> and the lead bailiff went, <laughs> is, there anything, <laughs> is there anything I can say to persuade you to leave? <laughs> there was, a, like, a life of Brian Paws. <laughs> <and> one... <laughs> Up. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything I can say to persuade you to leave? Then there was another pause and someone went, Fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Did you hear the woman? She went, I put a curse on you, I put a curse! She did. They're always giving it the curse. She did, she did, don't they? The minute it kicks off, I put a curse on you! I'd oh, in that case, we'll leave it then. You stay where you're lying. <laughs> Now, everybody watching this has got their remote control going, there's something wrong with the sound. <laughs> no idea. OK, at the end of that round, the points go to Chris Hugh and Gray. <laughs> OK, now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, please. I'll read at this week's topics and then we'll see what our panels can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Unlikely things to hear in a police station. Here, <laughs> <laughs> so is the microwave broken again. Taser that meat pie for me, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's unlikely, but I don't suppose anybody has handed in uh, Colonel Gaddafi, have they? <laughs> <laughs> I noticed the burglar making his escape. At this moment, I cursed the police cutbacks and gave chase, shouting, Nino, Nino, <laughs> Nino. <laughs> All units be on the lookout for a purple Renault Clio. Registration number, Saffron Doily 22, Bongella Chrysanthemum. Hiya! <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't manage to evict many of them, Sarge, but the good news is, I got some lucky heather. <laughs> No, I've not come to report a crime. It's just that I really missed the bill, so I thought I'd pop in for an hour. <laughs> uh, here, Sarge, pass us the art section out the Guardian, will you, mate? <laughs> yes, yes, I know how identity parade works. <laughs> That's her! <laughs> That's her! <laughs> <laughs> That's the woman I robbed. <laughs> Right, listen up, we've got a new man starting. He's half man, half horse. It's Inspector Morse. <laughs> 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 
Uh, yes, our, uh, our new 50-inch plasma screen TV. It is rather nice, isn't it? Well, if you can't beat them, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I am charging you with the murder of Mrs Thompson. That'll be £7.19, please. <laughs> Right, listen up, there's a giant fly attacking the station. I've called the SWAT team. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you've arrived, officer. Some bloke just jumped into the boot of my car and shot himself 14 times. <laughs> yeah, we got the tox report back. Turns out they go straight after the ticks. <laughs> I was about to arrest her size, but to be honest, my bottle went because she shouted out, I put a curse upon you! I put a curse upon you! <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is. <laughs> on likely things to hear in a science documentary. Having cloned Ian Wright, we now know that two Ian Wrights don't make an Ian wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Erectile dysfunction. Physical problem? Or has the wife just let herself go a bit? <laughs> well, this is incredible. This is a whole new species of miniature tiger. Oh, no, hang on, it's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> now, pay attention, here comes the shampoo bit. <laughs> <laughs> we discovered the source of the quark. It's the sound made by a posh duck. <laughs> <laughs> this is a red dwarf. His name is Anthony Worrell Thompson. <laughs> Welcome to the sky at night. And if we look out, we... Oh, hell! Croydon's on fire! <laughs> Despite getting a very bad press, biological weapons work at much lower temperatures than non-biological weapons. <laughs> Without penicillin, well, I'd still be cursing that day I went to Bangkok. <laughs> Tonight we look at the ginger community. <laughs> Physical anomaly. Oh, God's cruel joke. <laughs> ah, the Northern Light. Oh, no, Manchester's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> but will they find a cure in time? The last hope for mankind lies with scientists here at the Laboratoire Garnier. <laughs> Tonight on Show Me the Evidence, we look at the traveller community. <laughs> Can they really put a curse on you? <laughs> and as the sperm swim towards the eggs, it's hard not to think that I've ruined this fried breakfast. <laughs> going to have a fried breakfast. <laughs> OK, the points go to Mickey, Simon and Andy. <laughs> and that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Simon Evans and Mickey Flanagan. <laughs> Commiserations to Chris Allison, Hugh Dennis and Greg Davis. Thank you for watching. I'm Daryl Green. Good night. Dara and Comedy Chum is back later at 10 past 10 next week. Stephen Fry and Alan Davis joined by Frank Skinner, John Bishop and Sean Locke for QI tomorrow at 10 on BBC Two. Well, over on BBC Three now, a member of the audience is in for an unusual lesson on Lee Nelson's Well Good Show.